Hello everyone and welcome back to this uh, series of tutorials. In this video we will go through the second Move It 2 tutorial which is the Move It Quick Start in Arviz tutorial. So just to recap what we did in the latest video, we built our workspace, we changed a couple of things to make it work with Rust to Humble and we built our project successfully. So now we will go ahead and continue with the second tutorial. So let's click on this link over here and we will be directed to this page so uh, first of all the uh, the first thing we want to do uh, is uh, source our build project uh, we already did it in the previous uh, tutorial but let's do it again just for sanity so let's run this source uh, setup that bash file to make sure uh, everything is okay and then um, when we run this command there's a small mistake that we need to correct um, let me just show you if you try to run it as is you will get an error uh, that says um, uh, this parameter file doesn't exist and this error is coming because uh, by default uh, the tutorial launch file it's trying to initialize a planning pipeline that it's not set up in our move it config so that's why it's throwing an error because it's not finding the configuration for this planning pipeline so let's let's just open this in vs code and we will remove uh, that planning pipeline because we don't need it um, so we need to go I'll just do the all the steps with you so when we open our project we see uh, this over here so inside the source directory we will open the move it to tutorials folder we will go down into the doc folder and then tutorials and then quick start in rviz and then launch and this is our launch file over here so if we open it i already have it open uh, you can go here in line 32 this is where we define the planning pipelines that we want to use and in this case this is the problematic one so let's just erase it here save we can close and coming back to our terminal we can run our build command so uh, let's do this this is our build command from our previous tutorial I added this uh, extra argument this is just uh, this is an argument that allows us to build uh, specific packages so like you saw in our first build we're we are building a total of 70 packages or so for this project we since we just change a small line in one of the packages we don't want to rebuild them all uh, because nothing changed in all of the others so we just want to select uh, the package we change over here so it's this one so let's run this command it should be a lot quicker you see now it's done so let's source again our changes by running this command clear and now we should be able to run this tutorial command so let's go back to our terminal paste and see what we got so it opens up in Arvis uh, window uh, we can see here the Kenova 7 Duff arm um, let's follow along with this document over here I will just sorry for this I will just split them in my screen so we can see and follow along all right great all right so in this version of the tutorial they make you set up uh, it's supposed to launch an empty RVs window but I think it was updated so now it launches already set up but we will still go through these uh, instructions and I'll explain uh, everything that you see here so um, so the first thing they make us do is uh, adding a motion planning plugin so basically this plugin it's what allows you to interact uh, with your arm it allows you to plan 
trajectory, select uh, which planning group uh, you want to uh, plan trajectories for. I'll explain all of these terms as we go, but it's just an example to demonstrate that uh, this is the plugin that allow you to control your arm and use move it and a lot of things. So this is what they do over here. Uh, you, you, you can add it by going here in the add and then select it here and pressing OK. I won't do it because it's already done. So now this is what we see when we launch it. Uh, we see our arm uh, and the Arvis window. Um, there's a couple of things we would have to set up. Uh, just basically uh, the fixed frame over here, which is kind of the world that Arvis will, will use. In our case, we use the base link uh, transform. So this is kind of the the referential that Arvis uses by default as a fixed frame. Um, then uh, if we uh, open this up, we have to um, specify the, robo the robot description field, uh, the planning scene topic. This is a topic that listens to whatever vir virtual scene is set up. So in our case right now, there's no obstacles and, and anything special. So it's just an empty scene, but this would be the topic uh, where it would listen for uh, obstacles and scene changes and so on. Then we have the uh, display, the plant path topic. So this is where, uh, when we do a planning trajectory, this is where the path uh, is published so uh, we can listen to it and display it so this this topic can be found I believe in the planning request no nope. let me just find oh it's it's over here in the plan path so this is where you can find and if you have your custom trajectory topic you can modify it here uh, this is the default one, we won't change it. And in planning request over here, you can see which group we are planning for. So these planning groups uh, are depending on, on your on your robot. For us, they're all our all our Kinova arms are set up uh, the same. So they're split in two groups. The first group is the gripper over here, which you see in orange. So this is a group uh, just for the manipulator. So if you change your gripper, then you would have a different planning group. Uh, us, by default, we use the robotic uh, 2F85 gripper. So this is why this is what you see in orange. And we also have, let me illustrate it for you, the actual arm group. So this is all of the joints that can move. Um, so this is another group that you can plan trajectories for. Uh, so basically in a nutshell that's what uh, the planning groups mean. And this this can all be modified in the move it config. This is what we provide by default but if for your application you need a different group or a subset of a group you can always modify this with the move it setup assistant. Uh, but this this is not a part of this tutorial, so I just mention it. All right, so let's go to step two. Um, here in step two, we will explore the different views that we can access through this Arvis window. So they're described over here. The first one is the the actual robot in its planning environment. So as I mentioned, this is for now we have an empty environment, so uh, we we actually just see our robot in an empty space. Uh, the second one is the planned path for the robot. This we will be able to see it uh, just later on this tutorial, but essentially when you plan from one state to another, um, once you click the plan button, you will be able to see, uh, to visualize this planned path before you execute it. So this is a second view that uh, we can have access. And the third and fourth one is actually uh, different visualizations for our start and goal states uh, for our planning. So uh, we can, we're able to kind of see the arm in different colors. So uh, when we toggle the, the um, start state, the arm will be in green and we can uh, move it to any state 
uh, pose that we want. The same for the goal state, we can toggle it and then see an orange arm where we will drag it and uh, it, it will set the goal state. And then when we click on the plan button, you will be able to see uh, the trajectory between the green arm and the orange arm. So the, this is the other two views that we can uh, see. Now if we want to toggle them or de deactivate them, uh, this is where we find them. So for the environment uh, of the robot, you can go inside uh, the scene robot tab over here and this will toggle and uh, hide your scene. For now, like I mentioned, it's an empty scene for us. So this actually doesn't have any effect. Um, the second one, so the path, uh, same thing. You can go in the plant path uh, tab over here and you would be able to uh, activate or deactivate it using this checkbox and for the query uh, for the start and goal states we can go inside the planning request tab and uh, activate them here let's just change the planning group just so that we have our arm over here and so right now what you see in orange this is our goal state so I could change it wherever I wish and let's toggle the start state so in the same uh, sense we have the start state here so I can play around uh, with my start and goal states let's say like this I have a small example and then if I would go and click on the plant button over here uh, I would see the plant path so we are able to see how our planner found a solution f from our start state to our goal state so this is how you go around toggling and untoggling uh, the different views. For now, let's keep them both. You're, you're able to explore as you wish uh, on this step. So here, if we scroll down on step number three, I basically already did it with you in the previous step, but uh, this basically shows you how to interact with the arm. So as we did, we can drag the start states and the goal states and plan with them. Uh, if I click on plan here to see uh, how our planner uh, behaves. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that this start state, uh, you can play with it and you can see how the planner uh, plans from this state to the other. But when you actually click on execute, uh, the arm won't go, if, if your start state is different from the current state, by default your arm won't go to the start state to then reach the goal state. It'll just start from where, where it is right now and reach the next uh, goal state. So let's say if I click here on plan and execute, you will see that my arm will start from this candle position. It will reach his goal and then when it has reached the goal state, then the uh, start state will reset to the current position. Um, let's go ahead and try this plan and execute button. You see it starts from where it is, then it will go through the goal state and when, once it's reached, you will see the green state will reset to the actual position. So just uh, be mindful about this. So yeah, you, you're, you're, again, you're uh, free to experiment in this step and try different positions, different goals and different uh, start positions. Scrolling down to this moving into collision subsection, we will now see how uh, Arvis displays the arm when it's in, uh, in a collision state. So to do this, we will follow these steps. We will um, uncheck the plan path um, checkbox uh, over here. Let me just go in here. Actually the show robot visual that we will uh, uncheck. And then the goal state, we will uh, disable it just for this example. So now we're left only with our starting state. And uh, what they want you to do is to move the arm in a configuration where uh, 
two of its links would be in a, a collision. So this might be hard to do. Um, I recommend unchecking this collision aware IK, IK option. This is um, by default this is checked and this when the robot tries to find a solution for a pose it will have uh, its kinematics computed and it will take into account if any of the states along the way puts him in a collision state so uh, if this is checked uh, it'll be harder to hit a, a, a pose a robot pose where uh, there's a, a collision but if you uncheck it then uh, you will feel it when you move the arm. It'll it, it'll move a bit different, and it'll be a, a bit easier to reach um, a collision state. So let's go ahead and try to move it into a collision state. You can move uh, with this interactive marker here, which I find kind of difficult. But if you if you want to see it uh, better or faster, let's say. Let me just move here and you can go to this joints tab in the motion planning plugin and you can also move your joints from here so let's move joint number four all the way down um, okay i got it so uh we moved uh, here to joint number four and now joint number six you see when I try to move it towards the robot's base you can see that the links that go into collision uh, actually show up in red so uh, this is a way uh, that you could when you're planning your different uh, trajectories uh, this is a way that Arvis will tell you that this is a uh, an unreachable position or an impossible uh, position so uh, yeah that's that's how you can see uh, what happens uh, now you could check uh, this collision aware and you know now it's ju it just it's still possible but it's harder like you know I, I just got it here but uh, if you try to move uh, in different positions it, it's gonna be a bit harder to, to hit a collision so uh, you can also take this into account when planning your trajectories all right, <clears throat> so if we scroll down a bit over here, um, this is okay. This is just what I explained. Now this next section, uh, moving out of a reachable pose, same thing. It just to show you how uh, Arvis will react. If you try to move the arm into a position where it can't reach, it'll automatically stop, and it'll stop moving. So let's say if I drag it. Uh, here you see I still have a hold of this bubble but the arm stopped moving because it's out of reach and once I come back then it, it moves again so this is uh, just a normal behavior if you ever try to move uh, past the, the arm's reach uh, this is what you'll see then uh, this null space so uh, since we're using a 7 duff arm over here uh, with this configuration of arm, when you're in a certain pose, uh, there's still some solutions available uh, for for the exact same same pose. What this means is that uh, if you keep your end effector stable, so you don't move it, uh, it means that uh, basically your arm el your arm's elbow it, it it still has a lot of solutions possible. So you can experiment uh, with this. Uh, the different configurations that you can have for a same uh, end effector pose. So if you go to this joints tab here, you have a uh, a slider uh, here down where it says null space null space exploration. And if you drag it left and right, you you'll see what I mean. So for this same uh, tool pose, you can see I can actually move my arm's elbow into different configurations they're not all valid um, but it's just to show that uh, you could uh, do this to let's say avoid obstacles or uh, different things depending on your application so you can also explore with this uh, when you have a uh, set pose 
finally, uh, these last subsections, um, here we will set up for the next tutorials uh, the RVIS visual tools. So um, this is a some tools that allow you to interact directly with uh, your ARMS program. Um, it'll, it'll basically help us uh, trigger different steps of our program. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, set up this. Uh, if we go to the panels uh, drop down here, uh, let's say add a new panel and we will select the RVIS Visual Tools GUI and click OK and you will see this bar at the bottom of your RVIS window with the next continue break and stop buttons. For now you can click them, it won't do anything but we will lift, leave them here for the next uh, tutorials. And now uh, now that we have played around and uh, saw what is possible with RVIS, we can save this RVIS configuration so the next time that uh, we run this launch file we can start from this and we won't have to set up uh, the trajectory slider or, or the uh, GUI tools so it'll all be uh, here already so we can save this config by going to file uh, save config save config as sorry and then you can select uh, anywhere you want to save it so um, let's go ahead and save it in this path. So our workspace in the install folder, move it to tutorials, share, move it to tutorials, launch and let's call it my config.rviz and let's save this. So now the configuration is saved and the next time uh, we run rviz if we want to load uh, this whole configuration we could go into the file open config and then if we go into all of this path we would be able to find it it should be here my RVIS config so right now it's loaded I won't load it again but you can find it again here so that's it for this tutorial thank you for following around and I will see you on the next one bye bye